This is a massive investment of both cash grants, deferred taxes, tax cuts. This is very, very significant, but it's what's needed. Also ahead, the federal government under pressure to let more Australians return to the country, but it says the states are the hold-up. Authorities on the US West Coast warn of a mass fatality event as they search for dozens missing in massive bushfires. Naomi Osaka, the champion of this most unique US Open. And Japan's Naomi Osaka wins the US Open, taking her third major. Hello and welcome to ABC News. I'm Miriam Korowa. Let's check the weather around the capital cities for tomorrow. Sunny for Brisbane and Sydney, mostly sunny for Canberra. Partly cloudy for Melbourne, Adelaide and Perth. Windy with showers in Hobart and sunshine for Darwin. The Victorian government has unveiled a $3 billion business rescue package of cash grants, tax relief and cash flow support to help those hit hard by the pandemic. Let's get more on the business package from our reporter, Zalika Rismal in Melbourne. Now, Zalika, what has Daniel Andrews had to say about the details with this announcement today? Well, the Victorian government says this $3 billion business support package is the largest in the state's history, saying that it's necessary because the state is facing an unprecedented challenge. Now, uh, the package includes cash grants, uh, cash flow support and tax relief. I'll just take you through some of these key measures. So the package includes $1.1 billion for cash grants. That will allow uh, more than 75,000 businesses with payrolls of up to $10 million to access cash grants of up to $20,000. It will also include a payroll tax deferrals as well as targeted support uh, for the hospitality sector. Now, that will include measures such as waiving liquor licence fees as well as grants for individual venues, with Melbourne venues uh, eligible for up to $30,000 in support and regional venues for up to $25,000 dollars in support. Now, the state government has also flagged uh, further measures uh, which will be announced in coming days, including support for sole traders. Here's what the Premier had to say earlier today about the package. There will be further announcements tomorrow and indeed in the days to come to add to this package, but it is unprecedented because the challenge we face is unprecedented. We don't, no one is enjoying the reality we face, but none of us have the option of ignoring the reality that we face. We cannot open up now and stay open. It would not be safe. It would not be smart. Daniel Andrews there. Now, Zadika, this comes ahead of some restrictions being eased across Victoria from midnight tonight. Just take us through the changes that are coming and the next steps that might then be taken. Well, here in Melbourne, we've been in stage four restrictions for many weeks now, so some minor but very welcome changes coming as of midnight tonight. Now, they include a shorter curfew. It will now start at 9pm, not 8 o'clock. Two hours for exercise or for some social interaction with one other person outdoors. So that includes something uh, like uh, sitting in a park, for example, which we haven't been able to do uh, so far. It'll also include that single social bubble, which will allow a single person households or single parent households to nominate a person who will be able to visit them at home as well as playgrounds opening uh, as well. But the next step for Melbourne won't come until at least the 28th of September. That is a hard date uh, provided uh, Melbourne meets that 14-day uh, threshold of fewer than 50 cases per day. Now we're currently tracking at 56.9 and today the Chief Health Officer said he is confident that we will make that target and we'll be able to take that next step. But for regional Victorians, it's looking very, very promising. Now, regional Victorians tonight will also have uh, some restrictions eased, uh, in particular when it comes to outdoor gatherings. Uh, outdoor pools and playgrounds will also be opened and schools will make a staged return to on-site learning. Uh, but potentially, regional Victoria will take another step uh, within days, with the Premier flagging that they are on track to do that. Now, there 
trigger threshold for this next step is uh, different to Melbourne. Of course, it's uh, fewer than five daily cases over a 14-day average, and they're currently sitting at 4.1, so doing very well. And that next step would entail things like people being able to leave their home uh, for, for any reason at all, and also a, a staged reopening of, of cafes, pubs and restaurants to, to some on-site service. And Zalika, what can you tell us about a new COVID-19 case at the State Parliament? Well, we've just had this uh, confirmation that a security guard at Victoria's state parliament has tested positive to coronavirus. Now, we're told uh, that parliament has been closed until further notice for deep cleaning. Uh, we're told also that this particular individual stayed home as soon as they uh, felt unwell, but that contact tracing is, of course, underway. Now, parliament was due to sit on Tuesday. We're unsure at this stage uh, what, what that means for Parliament sitting. And Zalika, we had some protests again in Melbourne against the lockdown measures. What happened? That's right. Well, today is the second day where we've seen uh, anti-lockdown protests here in Melbourne. Today we've seen several arrests and also several scuffles, uh, primarily out near the Queen Victoria market. Now, that follows uh, uh, more than a dozen arrests yesterday and about 50 fines being issued for a similar protest. And, of course, another protest uh, last week where 160 fines were issued and 17 people were arrested. Our reporter, Zanika Rizmal, with all the latest details there in Melbourne. The Federal Health Minister, Greg Hunt, says the timeline for a coronavirus vaccine has not been interrupted. Oxford University will resume trials of its vaccine candidate with pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca after testing was abruptly suspended last week. Mr Hunt says the Federal Government will ensure safety is the top priority on any development. Australia has a deal to manufacture the vaccine domestically if it proves successful. We have one of the strongest universities in the world with one of the strongest medicines companies in the world under one of the strongest regulatory regimes in the world. They've prioritised, as we do, safety above all else, and they've examined the case, they've determined it's safe to proceed, and therefore the vaccine trials are continuing and the latest advice we have from the company uh, to my office as early as this morning is that the timetable for vaccine provision to Australia is unchanged uh, with early 2021 continuing to be the expected time frame. New South Wales has recorded nine new COVID-19 cases. Four of the cases are in hotel quarantine. One is locally transmitted and being investigated, while the final four are locally acquired with a known source. Two of the locally acquired cases were linked to the eastern suburbs Legion Club cluster, while the other two are linked to the St Paul's Catholic College Greystains cluster. New South Wales Health also noted that a previously recorded case visited the KFC outlet in Concord on the 6th of September. The New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian has insisted her government is stable despite the National Party's threats to break away from the coalition agreement over a koala protection policy. John Barillaro threatened to move to the crossbench over the legislation before backing down. The Premier says her focus is to provide a strong government. I'm a strong coalitionist and the comments uh, I'll make today are the same as I've made previously and uh, I remember the words of, of John Howard when he was Prime Minister on a number of occasions. Um, whoever leads the Nationals is a, ma is a matter for the National Party. That's always been the case. My job as the Premier is to provide the people that I'm passionate about governing for uh, strong and stable government and every decision I take every decision I make is about providing strong and stable government. What I don't want is people of any description to think they can pub publicly air issues uh, at the risk of creating any sort of distraction for the community. This is a time when all of us have to come together. Uh, this is a time when I, as Premier, have to make sure we are the best government we can be and our track record uh, speaks for itself. And I want to make sure that we redouble our efforts and make sure our communities know they come first. The people of this state come first. No single person, no single agenda. This isn't about one issue. This is about how we govern. And I want to make that very clear. 
and I've made my views very clear. This is about us putting our communities first and the people of this state first. That's a commitment I made when I made my oath of office as Premier and I will do everything I can to do the best I can on behalf of my government and uh, I'll continue to govern in that way. I'm Premier of New South Wales, not one part of the state or another, but the whole state. My ministers are working, doesn't matter which party you're in, doesn't matter which seat you represent. We have a commitment as a government, as a cabinet, to govern for everybody. And this is about us bringing everybody together. And that's what we need to do during these challenging times. The Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton says he would be willing to double the number of international arrivals to Australia if states provided more beds in hotel quarantine. There are more than 25,000 citizens who want to return from overseas, but Australia is only accepting around 4,000 arrivals each week. The cap was introduced to ease the burden on state hotel quarantine systems. Mr Dutton has told ABC Insider's host David Spears lifting the cap is contingent on states increasing quarantine capacity. The number of people that we can bring in uh, through the international ports at the moment is a function of, say, for example, the Queensland Government or Queensland Health's direction that people that all hop off a plane from Los Angeles have to go into a hotel for two weeks. Uh, at, the same, at the same time, they've got a cap on the number of places that they're making available at those hotels for quarantine. So uh, we're, we're working to those restrictions. I would be happy to double the number of people tomorrow if Queensland Health was to relax the uh, the quarantine period of 14 days, if that's what the health advice what, provides. What about people leaving if not, Australia? Then they need to increase the number of hotel rooms available. The opposition has rejected the assertion that the states are responsible for the slow rate of international returns. Shadow Home Affairs Minister Christina Keneally has accused Peter Dutton of attempting to blame his failures on Labor premiers. As the Minister for Home Affairs, Peter Dutton should be doing his job. We have seen him all week in a partisan play attacking Anastasia Palaszczuk. Not a peep out of him about what's going on in Liberal states that have exactly the same border closure policies as Queensland. Haven't heard him criticise Stephen Marshall. Haven't heard him criticise Peter Goodwin in Tasmania. Peter Dutton should stop playing partisan state politics. We don't have time for this. We're in the middle of a global pandemic. He should be doing his job. And his number one job right now as Minister for Home Affairs is should be developing a plan to get these stranded Australians home. 25,000 Australians are around the globe in places like the United Kingdom, in India, and Lebanon, and the Philippines. Lebanon, for heaven's sakes. The Commonwealth's already given $5 million to Lebanon. They've already recognized it as a humanitarian disaster, but they're leaving Australians behind in that country. It is within in the wit of the Commonwealth Government to resolve this. Send some chartered planes out. We've got two grounded national airlines. Use the federal quarantine facilities that we have in place. The Prime Minister convened a so-called national cabinet. Go there with a plan. The wife of a Queensland vet missing on a live export ship feared capsized off the coast of Japan says each moment is a living nightmare. Emma Order has joined calls for the search to continue after it was called off due to dangerous conditions. Her husband, Lucas Order, is among 40 people still missing after the ship went missing last Wednesday during a powerful typhoon. Ms Order has thanked Australian and Japanese authorities for their efforts but says the thought of their six-month-old son growing up without his father is heartbreaking. We don't know whether our Lucas is going to come home through the door or whether he's actually gone forever. The current situation is tremendously overwhelming. However, I'm not alone, as there are 39 other families feeling the heart-wrenching pain this tragedy is causing. Authorities fighting large fires in the US state of Oregon say they're preparing for a potential mass fatality event as weather conditions ease and recovery efforts get underway. At least eight people have died and dozens are reported missing after two large blazes saw half a million people placed under evacuation orders. Flames have destroyed thousands of homes and at least half a dozen small towns. This is our house, this is our garage. And this fire, it doesn't even look nearly as menacing on the video as it actually looks in real life, but there's a big fire in Ashland right now. It sounds like, you know, propane tanks exploding, so we're thinking that it's definitely where houses are now. 
Back home, feral cats have been wreaking havoc on Kangaroo Island's vulnerable wildlife and livestock industries for decades. But after this summer's deadly bushfires, conservationists say the problem is only getting worse. One of the world's largest eradication...